So, brothers and sisters, as your president in this 2011 convocation, I call this community to serious, sustained theological reflection. Our mission statement calls for us to theologically educate. What does this mean? Properly speaking, theologically educate forms your heart, your mind, and your action. It is not enough to declare that your heart is in the right place. Your mind must be in the right place. Your hands and feet must be in the right place. Traditionally, theology has served four functions, catechetical, apologetical, homiletical, and pastoral. The catechetical function is to train children and new believers in the faith, assuring that the apostolic message and not some other gospel is being transmitted. This happens in our homes. This happens when you raise your children. This happens when we bring new believers into the church and the ongoing instruction of our believers. Catechesis comes from the verb to echo. We must assure that new and current believers under our charge echo the apostolic message. The apologetical function is the role of theology in helping us to apply the biblical text to whatever challenges we are facing in our day. For us, this might mean everything from postmodern epistemologies to philosophical relativism to the new atheism to the commoditization of culture and so forth. The homiletical function is our commitment to train men and women to properly and effectively preach God's word evangelistically to the world as well as faithfully to the church and applying it to our lives. And finally, the pastoral function calls us to shepherd God's flock, care for those in need, comfort the bereaved, and counsel the distress. Today, looking across the evangelical landscape, catechesis in disarray, apologetics is weak, our preaching is ground down to bland moralizing, and our pastoral efforts have become captive to pragmatism and self-referential talks. So Asbury stands ready with this esteemed faculty to theologically educate a new generation of church leaders. Theology really does matter. It was Thomas Oden who said that if a preacher or a pastor doesn't know the difference between heterodoxy and orthodoxy, it's like a physician not being able to distinguish between disease and health. For if we don't have theological stability, we cannot have ethical stability. If we don't have ethical stability, we don't have stability of worship. And if we don't have stability of worship, then we are no longer connected vitally to our head, our Lord Jesus Christ. The apostolic proclamation we lost in a postmodern sea of autonomous self-definitions. So if today's evangelical church is really marked by shallowness, thinness, and cultural sameness, then we must do, as, I, as Jack Davis's phrase, we must become deep, thick, and different. A deep church is one which takes the encounter with a holy God seriously and is shaped by spiritual disciplines, holiness, and catechesis. A deep church is the opposite of a shallow one. We are to exhibit a deep understanding of the holiness and weightiness of God. In contemporary evangelicalism, God has become far too lightweight. In fact, the word for holy or honor and glory is kabod, which means heavy. That great sense of God's transcendence and holiness must once again overtake postmodernity's sense of overfamiliarity and casualness in God's presence. Indeed, we are profoundly in need of recapturing a sense of the presence of God in our worship. Nietzsche's madman, who described churches as, quote, the tombs and sepulchers of God, does in fact capture something of where we are today as we move from the real presence of Christ to the real absence of Christ in our churches. A thick church contrasts with a thin one and is characterized by thick relationships and commitments where worship is not a product we consume, but the great ontological orientation of our lives. We are the people of the risen Lord. The consumeristic, therapeutic self of modernity is to the gospel transformed into the Trinitarian ecclesial self of the new creation. A different church is not one marked by cultural sameness, but as a manifestation of the inbreaking of the new creation. 
Let me just say it. A visitor should feel somewhat out of place when they walk into our midst as they encounter people with a radically distinctive orientation. A different church is one which is profoundly distinct from the culture in its ontology, theology, worship, and moral behavior. To be different is to be a community marked by metanoia, by repentance. And brothers and sisters, may the shallowness, thinness, and cultural sameness of our churches become churches under God and your leadership, which are deep, thick, and different. 